Good morning, everyone. I pray today that you understand a couple things about the cross. Today, we're going to go to a place where many people forget, but let's start here. Because again, the cross is important to us, and we don't want to miss any aspect of the cross because things happened for us at the cross. Good and wonderful things happened for us at the cross. Let me start here. What do you do when your soul aches? When you're heartbroken? What do you do? What happens to you internally and externally? When the pain is so great, words cannot express it. What happens to you emotionally, physically, internally, externally, as I said? Something happens to you. It happens. In sadness, most of the time, that's when it happens. But it also happens in joy and laughter. What am I talking about? What is this catharsis, if you will, that I'm talking about that hurts us so much that we have this visceral, physical response when words can't say what it is? Tears. Simply, tears. One of my authors that I enjoy reading it from time to time, and I've really enjoyed this particular volume over the years, is Max Lucado's this, uh, No Wonder They Call Him Savior. In it, he has a wonderful piece on tears. And if you don't mind, please allow me to read it to you. Because I think it is so wonderful, and I don't want you to, I don't want to jerryman it up. I just want you to read and listen to it. He says this, page 105. Before we bid goodbye to those present at the cross, I have one more introduction to make, and that one is very special. There was one group in attendance that day. Their role was critical. They didn't speak much, but they were there. Few noticed them, but that's not surprising. Their very nature is so silent, they're often overlooked. In fact, the gospel writers scarcely give them any reference. But we know they were there. They had to be. They had a job to do. Yes, this representation did much more than witness the divine drama. They expressed it. They captured it. They displayed the despair of Peter, the betrayal and guilt of Pilate, the unveiled anguish of Judas. They transmitted John's confusion and translated Mary's compassion. Their prime role, however, was with that of the Messiah, whose with utter delicacy and tenderness, they offered relief to his pain and expression to his yearning. What am I describing? You may be dis you may be surprised. Tears, simply tears. Those tiny drops of humanity, those round, wet balls of fluid that tumble from our eyes, creep down our cheeks, splash on the floor of our hearts. They were there that day. They're always present at such times. They should be. That's their job. They are miniature messengers on call 24 hours a day to substitute for crippled words. They drip, drop, and pour from the corner of our souls, carrying with them the deepest emotions we possess. They tumble down our faces with announcements that range from the most blissful joy to the darkest despair. The principle is simple. When words are empty, tears are more apt. A tear-stained letter says so much more than the sum of all its words. A tear falling on the casket says a, a unspoken farewell. What summons a mother's compassion and concern more quickly than a tear on a child's cheek? What gives more support than a sympathetic tear on the face of a friend? Words failed that day. Words failed that day the Savior was slain. They failed miserably. What words could have been uttered? What phrases could have possibly expressed the feelings of all those involved? The task, my dear friends, was simply left for tears. What do you do when words won't come? When all the nouns and verbs lay deflated at your feet, what do you communicate? When even the loftiest statements stumble, what do you do? 
Are you one of the fortunate who isn't ashamed to let a tear take over? Can you be so happy that your eyes water and your throat swells? Can you be so proud that your pupils blur and your vision mist and in sorrow? Do you let your tears decompress that tight chest and untie the knot in your throat? Or do you route your tears and let them only fall inside? Not many of us are good at showing our feelings, especially men. Oh, we can yell and curse and smoke and yes, sir, but tears. Save those weak knee, timid things for something else. I want to be a world conqueror. We would do well, guys, to pause and look at the tear-stained faces at the cross. Peter, the burly fisherman, strong enough to yank a full net from the sea, brave enough to weather the toughest storm. This man, who only hours before, bared a sword against an entire Roman guard. But look at him, weeping, no, wailing, huddled in a corner, his face hidden from in his calloused hands. Would a real man be doing this? admitting his fault, confessing his failure, begging for forgiveness? Or a real man, bottle it up, justify it, rationalize it, keep a stiff upper lip, and stand his ground? Has Peter lost his manhood? You know better, don't we? Maybe he's less a man in the world, but less a man to God? No way. And John, look at his tears, his face swollen with sorrow as he stands eye level with the bloody feet of Jesus in his face, in his emotion. Is it a lack of courage? Is his despair a, a lack of guts? No. It's the love he has for the Savior. And the tears of Jesus, they came in the garden. They were there on the cross. Are they a sign of weakness? No. Do those stains on his cheek mean that he had no fire in his belly or grit in his gut? No. Here's the point. It's not just tears that are the issue. It's what they represent. They represent the heart, the spirit, the soul of the person. To put a lock and key on your emotions is the very part of your Christ-likeness, especially when you come to Calvary. You can't go to the cross with just your head and not your heart. It doesn't work that way. Calvary is not a mental trip. It's not an intellectual exercise. It's not a divine calculation or a cold theological principle. It is a heart-splitting hour of emotion. Don't walk away from it dry-eyed and unstirred. Don't just straighten your tie and clean your, clear your throat. Don't allow yourself to descend Calvary cool and collected. Please. Pause. Look again. Those are nails in those hands. That's God on the cross. There's nails in those feet. That's God on the cross. It's us who put him there. Peter knew it. John knew it. They knew a great price was being paid. They knew who was really pierced in his side. They also somehow knew that history was being remade. That's why they wept. They saw the Savior. They saw his tears for us. Father, thank you for wonderful writers who remind us that as Jesus was in pain on the cross, those tears were there. They expressed the love for us when his words could not. Yes, he spoke from the cross. But his tears say so much more. As in agony, they are there. But they're tears of love, tears of sacrifice, even tears of joy, because what he is doing and giving his life for us. Lord Father, we thank you for your son. Jesus, thank you for the tears shed for us. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Be blessed today, my dear brothers and sisters.